What's going on everybody? This is Coach Ty here with Project Pure Athlete. And today, due to popular demand on our last post, we had hordes of comments on this. We're gonna be taking a look at some one foot jump action. I thought of what better way to christen Project Pure Athlete's page with a drill that you can implement right away to help you jump higher and be more efficient as an athlete. Before we get started, let me know down in the comments below, what sport do you play? Are you a jumper? Are you just here to see what's going on? Because that's okay too. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at British triple jumper Benjamin Williams and an amazing display of athleticism through what are called alternating bounds. We're gonna be looking at our top three tips to better your alternating bounds. Before we go any further, if you don't mind, hit that subscribe button below so you can be up to date with everything here at Project Pure Athlete. You might as well go ahead and smash that like button. Okay, without further ado, let's get into the video. Today we're going to look at three ways to improve your alternating or single leg bounce. Alternating bounds are an excellent way to progress your reactive strength as an athlete. What is reactive strength? Well, reactive strength is the ability of an athlete to change quickly from an eccentric or lengthened muscular state to a concentric or flexed muscular state. Bounding in any form carries a very high amount of reactive strength to the body and is excellent for creating muscular strength and tendon stiffness, which is perfect for something like jumping. Disclaimer first and foremost is that any alternating or single leg bounds are a more advanced progression of plyometrics and do require a very high degree of strength and stability throughout the body to entertain. So please do not try these if you're brand new to jumping and if you do, please start very small. Number one, pushing into your takeoff leg. Single leg and alternating single leg bounds cover a great deal of real estate or distance and as such require a great deal of speed. By pushing into your takeoff leg, we give our body the last bit of kinetic energy potential it needs to begin the series of bounds, whether it be two, three, four, or even more. It's important to note that this push is directly proportionate to the amount of strength you possess. Too large of a push creates a situation where the contact of the foot ends up too far in front of the athlete, ultimately causing deceleration or slowing down and a poor start to your bounds. You can even start learning to bound by avoiding a run-up and starting from the pushing stride alone. Number two, the arms strike down with the contact of the foot. As we make contact with our feet, it's very important that the arms cycle down and through at the same time. This simultaneous contact improves the feedback we get from the ground by giving additional energy output. As Isaac Newton determined many years ago, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So if we strike the ground with additional force from the arms and the legs and have the strength to absorb the return energy from the ground, well, that's just gravy for a jumper. A great way to implement this more effectively is simply by your intent. This means as you bound, you want to be deliberately attacking the ground with both your feet and your arms. Number three, stay tall. Throughout the entirety of your bounds, you want to maintain an upright torso posture. This upright posture does a few crucial things in your favor. One, it controls the center of mass. If the center of mass gets too far forward on contact, it creates a prolonged ground contact time, meaning the athlete spends more time on the ground. That results in deceleration or slowing down, and that's not what we want to see as coaches or athletes, especially when the goal of these bounds is to cover distance. Two, it prioritizes reactive strength as we established before. Longer ground contact times like that we would experience with a more forward posture would be okay if the goal was one very long jump from a stationary start, but because the goal is to carry momentum or speed through each contact, this taller posture ensures that we're more successful with that. Three, it helps to control the gaze or the eyes. In sports, the body follows the eyes. If we're collapsed forward, the likelihood is that the eyes are not looking forward and our momentum changes from forward to down. Keep the chest up and the torso tall to ensure that your gaze is to the horizon and your body is moving forward.
So we hope you enjoyed today's video and you'll take all three of those tips and use them to your advantage. We do recommend, again as a disclaimer, if you're brand new to the world of jumping and training, that you implement alternating bounds quite slowly and over a shorter distance. They can do damage to your body if you're not careful. If you're an advanced athlete, have Adam and have some fun. Don't forget, let us know down in the comments below what you'd like to see from us here at Project Pure Athlete. We post weekly content and we do our best to make them both educational and entertaining. Don't forget to smash that like button, hit the subscribe button. Again, from Coach Ty here at Project Pure Athlete, we'll catch you in the next one.